Well, as the as the fan of the team that's always in the Super Bowl, I have to say no, I don't want that. I mean, it might it, it'll be fun. It'd be fun for you guys, but for me, it's not very fun because I don't want to I don't want to be sitting on the edge of my seat as Aaron Rodgers is just absolutely destroyed <laughs> my Patriots secondary, and instead of Jared Goff or like some other Cam Newton, I don't know. Like I want those guys. I don't want a good. I don't want to play a good quarterback. Like I, I have nightmares of Russell Wilson in, in the fourth quarter of the Seahawks game. In that Super Bowl where they almost won the game, I was there. And, of course, Matt Ryan, oh, no thank you. So, I, I mean, I understand, I understand was, you're watching the play of a lesser QB. Would, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying is to see fun. the – just two fun. iconic QBs both against each other. Yes, it would be fun. Like, it would not be fun for me in the moment, but, like, talking about it would be fun. And, like, after the game would be fun. Like, you know, who was better or whatever – who won, blah, blah, blah. It would be fun, but, like, in the moment, as a fan, no, it would not be fun. It would be very – it would be the opposite of fun. Okay, so now <laughs> that Davis brought it up, he set the table. As a Patriots guy, how do you view Aaron Rodgers? I mean, I, I'm sure you've watched enough tape. I knew it was coming, Jay. How, how do you – well, I want to know. Because, uh, look, this is – Packer fans want to know too and I think it it needs to be done whether it's positive or negative because it's the how and the why so as a guy that's covered the Patriots how you judge them what's your viewpoint of Aaron Rodgers all around and it doesn't matter how long you want to take really tell tell the people how you view him from an outside fan point a guy that's covered a different team okay guys I'm gonna be honest I'm I'm just gonna be honest I'm not gonna hate on Aaron Rodgers or anything like that Aaron Rodgers is incredibly good, but I think Aaron Rodgers is just kind of addicted to the big play because he can make the incredible big play, and he's just kind of, like, addicted to it. And for the past three, four years, it just seems like he just really hasn't been rolling with the offense. Like, even even in the game the Patriots played the Packers this year, the Patriots were forcing Aaron Rodgers to check the ball down and make the, make the third and fourth read and – he just kept holding the – he just patty cake with the ball and held the ball and threw the ball away. Just weird – just all all around weird stuff for me for Aaron Rodgers last year. I, it's just very weird. I hope with his new coach, for you guys, he can kind of just let the offense flow with him because I think that's just the problem. And the the reason why Matt Ryan was actually so good, he was actually – when Shaney came in, they were, he was bad at first because same with Aaron Rodgers, he really didn't – he just – they don't, don't like turning their back to the defense with play action. And Matt Ryan eventually got used to it. Now he's one of the best in the NFL at it. Maybe Aaron Rodgers can do that. But I think that's just the biggest problem. Doesn't like turning his back to the defense, likes holding the ball, and is amazingly talented. And because of that, he has shortcomings because of it, because of it which is like similar to a lot of like super talented people who like are just really talented and they don't feel like they should do the little stuff like Tom Brady does. I just feel like if Aaron Rodgers just did the little stuff, he would, it would not, we would not even be talking about this. So Rodgers did play action galore up until about three, four years ago, like you said, when it started not happening anymore. And I, a, a big thing was McCarthy's system. Person is he completely turned away from the play action, and he used to do it from like two thousand. I think it was two thousand and eight all the way till 2013, 2014, big time. And it just went away. Like McCarthy just, it's like he forgot to how to use tight ends. He forgot how to use running backs in the play action and use screens and all the other fun gadget plays that you see the Patriots use. McCarthy didn't do that. And when you get a coach that is doing the blind stuff, and Rodgers wants to I, – Rodgers has come out and said he wants to do those type of plays. He wants the offense to be fun. But McCarthy's offense wasn't fun. It was just – it was so readable that defenses literally – all they did every game was play two-man high safety, put a nickel corner in a zone, and literally took away about 80% of McCarthy's playbook. And I feel like this year, I, hopefully Rodgers – buys back into it because of the fact that there's play action. There's those gadget plays. And and Shanahan, if he can do it for Ryan, I, I fully believe LaFleur can do it for, for Rodgers. 
Well, I would have to say, jumping in real quick, Bryson, that assessment is absolutely right because I believe from 2008 till 2013, well, no, I'd say 2012, Rogers was infamous, and the reason why they had that 2011 Sports uh, Illustrated cover photo with all those receivers was is that there was no you couldn't cover everybody, and so Rogers literally played within the system. And whoever got open by just the route combination, and it didn't matter if it was second, third, fourth, read, check down, whatever, he just got the ball to the, the open guy. And everybody understood that's the way the offense worked. Then 2011 in the MVP season happened, coming off the Super Bowl, and the Sports Illustrated thing, and then the talent started to slowly dwindle away from that receiving core. And at that time, I believe he did exactly what you assessed. He stopped relying on waiting and finding the open guy, and everything became about the system was now Aaron Rodgers. If it's not open now, the line didn't always couldn't always hold up. There was no run game really consistent, and it got more and more about him in the big play to the point of now it's become a detriment. And that's exactly, I think, the the right assessment what you gave there. Whether we want to be like it or not, that's. And I think it's fixable. It's definitely fixable because he made himself a rod by doing exactly what we expect from him in this new offense. And it's just that it's went away over the last three, four years. Again, I mean, for your guys' sake, I hope so because they're. It sounds like they're going to be running a whole lot of play action this year. We need it. Totally agree. Patriots run tons of play actions. It's like one of the best things for offenses. Everyone. Oh yes, it keeps defenses honest and it keeps them on their heels. I mean, it it, it keeps them tired because if you get guys running up to the line every other play, backing off the line, running up to the line, they're spending extra energy trying to figure out which which type of offense you're going to run. And if you get them tired instantly off in the game. <laughs> It's game on then. Absolutely. And to also wrap up the Rodgers thing, 2014, 2014 Rodgers felt like Peyton Manning level scary. And last year he felt like not scary at all. Just as a Patriots fan, like just sitting on my couch, how scared I was, like scale one to 10. Peyton Manning always had me at a 10. Rodgers in 2014 had me at a 10. And then last year it was just like, it was like a two. I, I can fully see that. It had a different feel to it, that's for sure. It just felt awkward the whole season. It did. Even from a Packers perspective, it was it was weird. Especially season. when Philbin was in last year, too. Philbin, when he took over, it just, he, it just didn't feel right. All right, guys. Final word. Uh, go ahead. Uh, we will start with you, Dave, so we could let our guest have the last word. So go ahead, guys. All right. Go ahead and check us out, folks. We're on all the platforms. We're on all iTunes. We're on Spreaker. Um, we're on Spotify. We're, we're on everything. And we're available. Old episodes, the episode that's happening right now, you're going to be able to come back and listen. You can follow us at JNDP33 for, uh, for Jay, our producer. You can follow myself at Steak and Cheese. And at Dylan Busby one for our fantasy files guy. He'll be back soon. He's on hiatus because he ends up getting married. I got the old ball and chain. I did Stephanie. I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, no, man, it's it's been a blast, guys, and it really has having you on and seeing what's been going on and Patriots camp and Patriots world and and I'm 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 looking forward to seeing another good year from Brady in the offense and Belichick's scary defense that I never like playing. But, I mean, I'm going to let you go ahead. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and tell them one thing. Hey, you know what, guys? If you want to talk some football, too, NFL addiction is a great place. A lot of good debate. There's, It's always going off, even anything from, like, the 60s, 70s, today. Uh, it's very cordial. There's no bashing. There's no trash talking. It's just very good football debate. And that's why we bring it on our show. Also, too, if you want to go ahead and win some stuff on Raz Addiction, I win stuff from there all the time, guys. I, I go ahead and 
get the tailgating kit set that I had. It was like a seven piece, two hundred fifty dollars set. I wanted it for forty bucks. I went ahead and I went helmets. I went them for sixty bucks, twenty bucks. Um, they even have money rises on there where you can go on and put in ten bucks and win a hundred or two hundred. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff there, and it keeps NFL fans busy in the off season too. Plus, trying to collect that memorabilia set you always want. But NFL addiction and red addiction, where it's at. But Bryson, come on, you go ahead and close us out, brother. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, guys. Good luck in the season, of course. I am, of course, at Bryson well. NFL. At Bryson NFL, find me everywhere. Title talk. And I just want to say, Packers fans, I hope we can be friends. I'm sorry if I post the picture and slander Aaron Rodgers maybe a couple times on Twitter, but you can do this. You can do the same thing to Tom Brady, and I'll even retweet it. I'll favorite it. I'll laugh with you because it's really not that serious. <laughs> well, it's all good, man, and we enjoyed having you on, and uh, we'll have to get you on again in the season because we are trying to. We are expanding our horizons, so we're trying to find as many people from different teams that would like to be more regular guests on and kind of cover their team and give us their perspective during the season. So I think Brian definitely earned that right. Right. If you're interested and you did a great job, we really appreciate you and you, you know your stuff. So if you're interested, get in touch with us, and we appreciate you having on. Thanks a lot, Bryson. Well, thank you, guys. Good luck in the season. Talk to you soon. You too, brother. Have a good one. All right, thanks a lot, folks, and you guys have a wonderful evening. We will be back on Thursday night with the Monty of the Full Monty Football Show, who I was previously a guest on, if you want to go back and check, last two weeks ago on the 11th of August. I was on there as a guest uh, representing our show. He is now going to join us on Thursday. We will either have a guest sub... Or I will be flying solo with Monty because we are sending Dave on assignment to cover the Redskins-Falcons game live and bring us back some inside the news from uh, the actual game there down in Atlanta. Because the devil went down to Georgia. Yeah, he's down in Georgia, so it's a good opportunity he had so we can actually send him there and get us some inside scoop and really get to watch the guys up close and personal. Uh, to be able to cover the NFL a little bit more for you Redskins and Falcons fans. So, Thursday night at 9.30 p.m., we will be back with Monty of the full Monty Football Show. Tune in. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to follow us and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. Radio.